بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السبحة The Prayer Beats رؤيا الجنيد وفي يده سبحة فقيل له أنت مع شرفك تأخذ بيدك سبحة فقال طريق به وصلت إلى ربي لا أفارقه Imam al-Junaid was seen one time and his hand, he had a subha. Uh, subha is something like his prayer beads here. And it was said to him, you with your nobility and your honor, you take in your hand a subha, this subha, you ha- you carry this. And he said, bihi wasaltu ila rabbi. This is a path that I've arrived to my Lord with. And I never leave it. La Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says about this and this is in the commentary on this he says عد التسبيح بالأصابع سنة that to count your tasbih with your fingers is the sunnah and the reason for that you come on the day of judgment and your limbs will start bear witnessing for or against you and so you can come in on the day of judgment and your fingers will tell you he made tasbih with me. He was saying subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar with his hands. He was saying astaghfirullah with his hands, his fingers. So he says, wa amma adduhu bin nawa wal hasa wa nahwi dalika fa hasanun. He said, and as for counting it with little pebbles and stones and anything the like is fine. Wa kana min al sahabati sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min yafalu dalik. He said, it's good because some of the companions were doing that anyways. So we're not doing something that is an innovation if we do with that. And then he says, وَأَمَّا التَّسْبِيحُ بِمَا يُجْعَلُ فِي نِظَامٍ مِّنَ الْخُرْزِ وَنَحْوِهِ فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ كَرِيهَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ يَكْرَهُهُ As for using uh, something that has been put on a string, and he's basically speaking about this prayer beads, um, something similar to this, some of the scholars have disliked it and others did not dislike it. So he's telling you there is a difference in opinion about this matter. وَإِذَا حَسُنَتْ فِيهِ النِّيَّةُ فَهُوَ حَسَنٌ غَيْرُ مَكْرُوهُ Now if the intention behind it is good, then it's fine, it's not, it's, it's a good thing to do and it's not disliked. وَأَمَّا اتِّخَاذُهُ مِنْ غَيْرِ حَاجَةٍ وَإِظْهَارُهُ لِلنَّاسِ فَهَذَا إِمَّا رِيَاءٌ أَوْ مَظَنَّةُ الْمُرَاءَاتِ Now as to take it without any need for it, you're someone who does not need to use a sibha, okay? <coughs> And to show it off to people, there are some people that go around and just twirl it around and just carry it with them and do all kinds. And he says to just show that to people, then either that is riya, that's just ostentation, you're just showing off, a uh, Mr. Pious look at me with my sibha, or madhanatul muraat, or people might consider, might think that you are just trying to be ostentatious with this. Now, we mentioned in our previous uh, council that. A lot of dhikr, a lot of remembrance is not about just doing a lot of sakhra, 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 and just doing la ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa like just doing it a lot with your sibha. It's that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your heart in every state. That's what a lot of dhikr is about. And this is just a path, it's a means to get you to that. And that's what Imam al Junaid is saying here. He used to carry one not to show off, not to innovate, not to do anything. But for some people, Carrying the sibha keeps their tongue occupied, 
with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's better to have your tongue occupied and have your heart sometimes synchronize and sometimes go out as you practice on your way on this path to have your heart in constant remembrance because you can't expect going from no remembrance to constant remembrance overnight. This is something that you have to practice and keep walking on the path to get to. So some people, it just the sibha is, uh, is needed for them to keep their tongue occupied so that at times when their heart goes into heedlessness, at least their tongue is constantly doing it. It's a means for the tongue to remind the heart, wait a minute, we're doing remembrance here. Don't go into heedlessness. You could be almost about to engage in something questionable. But just because you have the sibha in your hand, it's something your eyes would fall on and then you remember, you're in remembrance. You cannot be doing this. So if it's done with the right intention, okay, and you're just trying to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this and keep your some, some of your limbs in constant remembrance, it's good and you should go ahead and do it. Not everybody is so amazing that they just with their hands all the time. But once you have something, some tool in your hand to keep you remembering, not to show off, okay? You're just trying to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it doesn't matter to you that you don't have it that people will think of you differently or anything like that. The second you're thinking about people, you have a problem. Um, but if you're concerned that, I forgot my sibha, like I need to just keep my mind occupied and my, my tongue occupied with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the whole reason why you're carrying it, then that's fine. And as uh, Imam al-Junaid here is saying that to him, it was a path that got him to a station where he got to knowing his Lord more and being always remembering his Lord more that he would not leave. So it's not a big deal. Some people find it as uh, they go with the other opinion. But Imam Ibn Taymiyyah here is giving us a nice balanced approach to this whole issue, showing that it was a differed upon matter. And it really goes down to your intention with this. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. الفضل أجزل والمواهب أوسعون